everyone welcome this is my reading of my experience on the winter solstice in melbourne australia in 2018 so it would be the summer solstice in the area of the world that i am it was during a guided two-hour yin and meditation class that i took at a favorite yoga studio down there but um a few pages of my experiences my first transcendent experience that i ever had where i met my guides and um, these are types of experiences that i have more efficiently when i close my eyes now with proper intention but um it was really cool so i wanted to read it today on the winter solstice of december 21st 2020. here we go i was nowhere everywhere or somewhere. I wasn't meant to know. Somewhere beyond time or space, where we exist to learn or to teach. The image came to me cloudy at first, seeing without my glasses. I was bare. It was needed to see things clearly. I can only truly, truly see when I'm there. So in this space, I wasn't wearing my glasses. It was the deepest of night in the forest. No city for years, no humans for lifetimes. It was the most beautiful scene, but I couldn't see much. It was indigo, only the moon lit what she wanted. A lake in the distance, a bit away and down the mountain. A fire had been set for us, large, wild, and strong. She had been burning for longer than time itself. The scene was a gift. The place was a gift. For the ceremony, for the ceremony I wasn't told what was happening. I was safe and welcomed. No words were spoken, but there were many languages understood. I understood clearly from where I perceived it all. Out of body, out of time. It was all a gift. It was a gift from them. There were many of them for me. The masters, the guides, the teachers. They come when they are needed, when they choose, they decide. We have no control over so much. We know so little, and they came to me. I was so grateful. She needed to die. She had endured so much. Her life had served its purpose, but it was time. She needed to die. She was me, the me that had been created out of this lifetime. In parentheses, I wrote the pain body. Eckhart Tolle describes it, but um, it's the ego or, you know, the a body that you identify with and the experiences. So whatever term for that you need, that's what I was viewing was that version of myself, like just literally seeing myself dead in front of me. Um, the pain body, the torture of life, the sadness of reality, the whys I had scratched and clawed over time and time again etched into oblivion over and over. Why me? Why this life? What does it mean? Why did this happen? Why does love hurt? Why does trust sting? Why was I put here? I didn't ask to be born. Why did sex feel wrong with him? When do I receive? I'm always asked to give. Why this life? Why me? Why? 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 Answer me. I didn't deserve this. I've been angry. Justify my scars, my pain, my blood. Why, my, why, my, why, my, why, my? Justify this, Sarah. Someone needs to tell me. Someone must know. Swirling in my own, clouded by the hurt, the gloss of these tears still dripping infinitely from tired eyes. I've wept for eternity, screamed silently since birth. Maybe before. Who could know? I know now I was not meant to know. A lifetime built by the why, the question, searching, never an answer. There will never be an answer. There never was an answer. But why, my, why, my, why? Why nothing? She needed to die. It was time. I mourned for her, deeply and without shame. She had carried me through it all. There was real pain, wrong pain, twisted and disturbingly evil, energies too damaged to see the light shining within me. I was taught love from someone in the deepest of pain. No one was ready for me. No one knew. For this pain, I have wept. I have served. I have loved. I gave. From me, they sourced. 
None of them knew what I was. I loved for them. I gave enough for them all. What was needed was taken. And the infinite source, the light they took from, what of her? The source provided. What was needed, what was left, that didn't matter. That never mattered. They didn't know she was a source. They didn't know she was a light. So they took and they drank. What was left, she endured. Tonight she died. With her, the story finally silenced. I wept inside, I wept outside, here and now and there as well. I deeply mourned in this, mourned in this moment. She was so strong. She'd been given nothing. She knew nothing. There were times that I thought I was her. She didn't deserve any of this. But now she is dead. With stillness comes peace. She is now free. We are both becoming free. I knew there was something more to come, that she did not suffer in vain, that she had never screamed silently. How was she to know that every word had been received, that she was now home, that she was not meant to know the hows or the whys, just that it is and that all is well. I haven't read this in a long time, so this is really cool. This moment in darkness, her pale body becoming cold, was for her and I alone. This moment in darkness, her pale body becoming cold, was for her and I alone. It was silent in the woods, in a small clearing, in the thickly wooded forests of the somewhere. Just myself, me, and the trees. Time, space, realizations, moments all came and went quickly, without transition, without fear. Visions were experienced as they were presented. I saw her, me, curled up on the ground as you would lay on your side after a glorious shavasana, as you would in bed, alone or companion, as you would in your cry spot, a place I would crawl into when being screamed at by another tortured someone, as you would after death, when the light has left this body, as you would lay, that's how she was laying, curled on her side and at peace. My consciousness, myself, my awareness was devastated here. I knew she had to die. I knew this moment was coming and I knew it was real. She was my security blanket, the veil I threw on when the world seemed too much. She was my justification for never being truly vulnerable. This is what happens when you love. She's felt real pain many times, many places. So I had carried it, all of it, and her with me for infinity. To justify the world, this is why I am the way that I am. Because of this, I have endured. I had built my scars to be my armor, too thick to touch what was real anymore, too dense to feel the gentle breeze, my war cries too loud to hear the beauty and stillness and silence. I had known, above all, that I couldn't function without her, without my pain body, without my scars. Who really is underneath it all? I was afraid to look inside. I wept as I covered her. I ebbed and flowed with my sobs, reaching for gently fallen leaves gifted by the forest trees, grass, dirt, debris, death, becoming a blanket of warmth, of comfort, small knowns in an unknown moment. She was covered in silence, my cries, the only calming sound that could be heard, a sound I can never forget, a soothing hymn, one that has sung me to sleep for a lifetime of unanswered pain. Comfort from what is, comfort from breathing and repetition, comforting self from a bleeding heart, self loving self, self loving the unloved, unsung. I was given a quiet place to grieve, a stage for myself and I. It was quite special. I felt safe and alone in a blackened unknown. How could this be? The whispered questions began to creep, but at once clarity. There were to be no questions. I was to receive this moment I knew somehow, was told, and understood quickly. There would be rebirth. I was to trust. This moment, one, would never last, would not last forever. There, These would come and go. There would be many more times. I had a lot to learn. I had a lot to share. 
but this one was special and this time was for me. This next bit is just in brackets, it's just kind of like stage direction. The scene changed quickly. In one moment I'm crying with her, me, I'm hugging her in the space she used to occupy, and quickly that time was over. Accept what is, accept what has. This is what change feels like for this breath. Feel it, breathe it in now, breathe it out now. During this time and always, we only have our breath. Come back to this magical reality as often as you can. We breathe in magic, we breathe out magic. We are magic. Let's take a breath here. It's a magical day. Thank you for watching. I'm now back at the fire, but the fire has turned into a ritual, burial, sacrifice of the dead. A platform had been created for us, tall and very strong, a gift made by them. This would hold the weight of it all. She, I, had been placed there, serene, eyes closed, calm, at peace, wrapped up with gentle care, strong love and compassion. Understanding of the ritual, the process, she was wrapped by one who had done it for thousands of years, or my understanding of years. She was, is a goddess. I was standing now a goddess. I still have much to learn. The me that lives on is true. The she that had died was to serve me. She served her purpose. She was very brave. Now the goddess lives on. I actually forgot that part. I was overwhelmed with gratitude, loss, love, sadness, fear. I was now alone. I had to be strong. I knew I had to be strong. I knew I would be strong. I knew I had been strong. I knew time did not exist. I knew I was safe. I knew this was real. I knew this was love. I wanted to say thank you. I wanted to give something to bring joy. It brings joy to give. We are meant to serve. Even in the darkest hour, the light is strong within me. It had always been strong and now it can be seen. She was gone and I remained. What I see as time changed, it did not feel strange or rushed, just needed. The moment that had been needed was not anymore, so it changed to this one. Who controls it is not a question. What happens just does because of what is needed from moment to moment. That was the only way that I could really conceptualize time at that time. Um, and then this is another bracket. Consistency and presence is completely needed to perceive this reality. Only a few times during my meditations did my mind, my like, this mind that I was like in yoga wandered. Um, the present reality as well as what my simple mind had then focused on became clear in this new higher mind's eye um, that had opened during this experience. The simplicity of the human brain and what was happening was all completely clear. I did not need these answers. I did not need to question what was happening, how I was perceiving this moment or even any of the larger energy questions that you would think would come up on this platform. None of that came up. It was quiet. It was knowing, it was warm, it was lovely, it was pure peace. Pure, pure, pure peace. The scene that was now the moment, the scene that was now that moment was exactly the same view that I had seen before. The only difference now was that the body, my pain body, my ego, as well as the entire platform that had been wrapped up and then placed on was now completely engulfed in a magnificent fire. A massive and most glorious blaze that had been lit from the individual spark taken from the first infinite fire we all kept warm from, from the very beginning. She was to be burned, reborn, given back to Mother Earth, ashes to ashes, dusk to dusk, stardust we are, stardust we came, stardust we become, the infinite circle, pain becomes strength, becomes nothing, becomes energy, becomes energy, becomes energy. Different stories get clouded into the one, different languages merge into one, sound, energy is all, from it we come, go, came, went, merging, burning, regenerating, feeding, viewing this flame as viewing all, experiencing this flame as experiencing all. We are all, we come from all, we go to all, we are, I am. It comes and goes so quickly. When time is not real, nothing holds us there. It's bearing, experiencing it seems so right, it feels so right. Nothing is to be questioned. Nothing was man-made, it just is. What is needed is there, what is not is not. Simple ways not to be questioned, they just are. So, be here in it. Time will lose all control.
We all experienced this moment together, the masters and I. I don't really use that term anymore. I don't know what term to that I do use. I use more of my guide, my team, and things. So when I say masters here, that's just the same type of language. We all experienced this moment together, the masters and I. We are communicating, honor, honoring the dead, honoring the love, the light, the being. I was smiling here. She was so loved. She had always been loved. I never knew then, all those years of pain. It was amazing to feel so much warmth came from this moment. I was so grateful. My heart felt fuller than possible. Love was a feeling that exploded from inside our deepest home. Gratitude was felt singularly as if nothing else in existence could possibly compete with this magic. Gratitude overpowered everything inside and out. I wanted to say thank you. I wanted to give a gift. I knew now that an exchange was to be made. I was to offer something. I love giving. What joy out of heartache and unforeseen pain. This was a gift from my heart to be able to give freely. I'd been given this blessing. Now for my presence, what gift out of the infinite can you bring to the infinite? To the masters that came to me, how do you honor and show gratitude that is felt when it is the most powerful you've ever felt them? This exchange, how do you honor it? My heart searched for what my mind's eye would find. I reached into my light so far and wide inside my being to the stars, the night sky we are deep within, to the four corners of myself. I did this, I reached, and then I reached. As far as my mind's eye could see, as far as these long arms could reach, I now know why I was given these long arms. They could grasp the stars. I reached beyond love, beyond pain, beyond life, to the deepest parts of myself and grasped what I could, four bits of stardust from the deepest and most remote places, the four corners of my deepest self, into the infinite and found my gifts to give. I held them in my hands, hands left on top of right, in my hands held close to my heart, close, safe, they would be kept safe, they would be loved. I was so grateful to give, so I gave. I said, thank you, I honored the masters. I honored the moment, gift. I honored their presence. I honored knowledge. I honored myself and all. I honor the ceremony, the sacrifice, myself and them, all a moment of gratitude that grew from the deepest pain, a gift of stardust, a gift of myself, a gift to all. I was grateful. I was bowed to them. I thought it would be ending soon, and I stayed with the moment in tears for a goodbye. I was wrong. The moment changed again. The masters and I were present again around the first fire, as she burned and would forever and all. It seemed like we had come back to rest, to be ready for a new journey ahead. The moment to mourn was complete. The moment of sacrifice had come and gone, and now I was to receive once more. There were gifts to be given to the goddess, to me. I was to receive something here. They knew this moment and seemed confident. This was the moment that had the most purpose to them. The before was for me to be ready. They know so much, we as humans know so very little. You have access, trust the process, keep listening. I can see them all in front of me as I write. So many masters came, I will forever be grateful. They have gifts for me to keep, to know I have already, gifts to cherish, to honor, a sacred, self-loving, self-loving all. They were four to match. What you give, you receive. Elements, pieces of the whole, four were given, earth. In stones, a selenite wand and marble had been acquired that day, and this was not by accident. These hold power, precious stones, herbs, healing, loving, gifts from the mother earth to help and heal. Use them, I was told, to help, to mend, to teach, to enjoy. They have power in the earth. I will find strength in the earth. There is magic. Thank you. I bow. Air, in two parts, scent and in breath. Scent is powerful and can heal and love. Learn with breath, heal with scent, protect with scent, enjoy with scent, teach with it, prosper, aromatherapy holds power. There's so much here to be shared. I have so much to learn. Yes, we connect to our infinite with breath. In we come, out we leave. Everything starts and ends with breath. We live, we survive, we love, we breathe. To breathe is to be, is to know. Time loses power when we come to our breath. Sit and breathe and count them if you'd like. Count the infinite magic. We connect to our infinite with purposeful, enjoyed, conscious breath.
Thank you. I bowed. Water. I, I feel a little embarrassed about this one. Water, I was told, is a gift I have always possessed. I carry it deep, carry it deeply, unknowingly through its true home need power. I never knew, but soon I will know, with the growth of my hair, waves cascading down in its own concrete form, I will find its home and rightful place. Scroll my hair, I was told, let it fall, and with it, water will find its home within me. There's so much to be said of my hair. Wars have been fought, lifetimes spent. There's a story here. Grow my hair, do not keep it short. Let the water flow three, freely and intensely and see what happens. It is a gift, I accept it. Thank you. I bow. Fire, a flame being held close to the heart of a master was now in sight, sourced sustainably from the infinite fire, the one from the beginning, the one that kept us warm, the one that sparked, the one that shared, the one we went back to, the one we stood at now, a small piece was now held. This fire sourced from strength, from courage, from life itself, to live and let the world see, to dance as if everyone is watching, to lead as if all, to lead as if all, as well. To, okay, let me say that again. To dance as if everyone is watching, to lead as if as well, to become, to take a rightful place. The power is in the fire. It is not to be mistreated. It is not to be disrespected. It is to be loved and revered with passion. There's so much power in the fire. There's so much love in this fire. It is made from love itself, from the mother, in the spark, from the source of light and courage itself, from gratitude itself. This flame came from that home, that sacred place where everything begins and ends. Where time does not exist in this space meant to teach and honor where fire was born. A small piece had been sourced and was meant for me. The fire was the only tangible gift that was given that I was meant to reach out, accept and take. I did not know how, whatever form I was in at the time was not always clear to me. I was to receive, I was to perceive, so I stood with gratitude. I breathed, thank you, closed my mind's eye and bowed again to the masters. I stayed in this moment, breathing grateful tears, complete tears. Upon opening my mind's eye, coming back to this place, I saw it clearly for the first time. The fire that had been giving was now placed deep within me, inside my core, my solar plexus, my space. In the temple, I built the happiest of happy places, the safest of spaces. Inside the self, this flame was now home, I was told, inside me resides courage, deep love and passion, knowledge, love, joy, prosperity, abundance, growth. It all now lives inside the fire, inside the flame, inside this being, inside of me. I was overwhelmed with the strongest gratitude I had ever experienced. I'm grateful now as I write, as I read, I feel its power deep within me. I felt it then. I felt quite calm. I felt a sense of being that I had never known before a sense of belonging to the stars, to us all, to myself. I was home, surrounded by love and compassion, surrounded by acceptance, swirls of joy enveloped each of us, magical rings of smoke sourced from the flame. The air itself celebrated around us. The elements were rejoicing, dancing around us all, the gods, the masters, and the goddess. A spiritual celebration of energetic goodness, madness, and joy. The mother was breathing. We felt the pulse of everything and all existing. The world became more connected that day, clearer now to be appreciated. How expressive our universe is, how bizarre not to see. But then again, compassion. When it's time, we are shown. When it is time for me, when I showed up to experience this moment, when I told the universe, yes, I'm open to receive. I'm open to receive all the blessings of the universe. I never knew. How amazing, I couldn't see. The masters were there. They listened and came. They listened, they were always listening. I had always been safe. I would always be here. I was home. Sometimes, this is another in brackets, something I've learned when we feel as though we've been searching desperately for the answer. Find a solid moment of clarity within this chaos. Find a way to stop and breathe. Know that for sure you are not meant to know this answer. Let it go. Put it down. 
Let this burden glide off of you, from your shoulders, down your back, down to Mother Earth to be transmuted. You, naturally, just do not need to know. That answer will come when it's time. Let that free you, not be an added burden to the load of questions and troubles you carry. Put it down. My experience would fade slowly in and out until the meditation was guided to a close. I was, this is another recap. I was in a lead two hour yin experience for the winter solstice and knew beforehand that what was happening would be brief but extraordinarily powerful. This moment within moments to change this life completely, to show the first few steps of the path I've been meaning to saunter down for a long time, for as long as. The road has been long and not so arduous when observed as complete but actually so wonderfully, entirely worth any troubles I've seen. Not through the eyes of the pain body, I like to say ego now, distorted by time, but with a clear image seen from behind the observer. A life enjoyed accurately in the little things which bring such pure presence. Joy in a book read while lounging effortlessly on the strong arm of a favorite tree. Gratitude for the inherent empathy I've known deep within my soul, a superpower for this goddess. Strength in staying deep in meditation longer than I ever thought I could. It took a long time to process this experience and an even longer time to find the courage to write it. This is the beginning of something, what it is I am not meant to know right now, but now my story truly begins. Please share with me how this reading makes you feel. With love, with strength, with all. Warmly, Sarah. Thank you so much for being with me here today on the winter solstice and experiencing these moments with me. I have not read that in quite some time and to read it today felt extraordinary. So thank you for being with me. Please share, like, comment, subscribe, be with me on this journey. I'm so grateful for every single being that I get to connect with because of this. Thank you. I love you. Happy solstice. I'll see you soon.